right okay so today we will be discussing right a very important lesson in accounting right so this is basically your lesson number 5 if you look at the a level accounting syllabus the lesson or the unit number 5 is about the accounting concepts right it's about the accounting concepts so we have learned one of the connected topic to this particular area right we have learned the conceptual framework earlier though it is something we learned in the grade 13 right i took it early so that will give me a basis for you to teach the rest of the accounting part right so today my plan is to cover up the accounting concepts part and essentially we'll be covering the examinable areas right okay right now we'll move on now what is an accounting concept okay what is an accounting concept now accounting yes we all know in accounting what we do is right so there are there's a business entity and of this business entity there are interested parties the stakeholders and for these stakeholders for them to make decisions they need information they need financial information so this financial information is provided right in a business there are like transactions we capture them through the source documents then we record them in the primary books then we record them in the general ledger then we record them in the trial balance and then finally we produce the financial information so this is what basically happens in the accounting process now we know about accounting now accounting the basic task is to communicate right communicate what is our financial performance how was our income what were our expenses and what is the profit we have created right and what is our financial position right how much of assets we have and of which how much contributed by the owners in terms of equity how much contributed by the external parties in terms of liabilities right so so basically we provide this set of information what we do is a communication process in accounting and in that process what we do is kind of a public duty right why we communicate the inside information to outside parties and the internal parties for them to make very important decisions so accounting is a very important role now in that role right there are certain things that we need to ensure right there are certain bases certain basics that we need to ensure there are certain uniform principles that we need to ensure now these are what we called accounting concepts accounting concepts so let me tell you right now accounting concepts right accounting concepts are kind of like the basic rules it's like the basic rules that we have to follow this is kind of the base right? this is kind of the base these are like basic rules right it's kind of like a convention custom it's kind of like a convention as a custom that we have right it's kind of a custom that we are going to practice that we are practice and these concepts will increase the uniformity these concept will increase the uniformity right and on the other side these concepts will increase the consistency sangata bhava consistency these concepts these are universally approved universally accepted rules these are universally accepted rules universally accepted rules that are kind of like a customary thing kind of like a convention that we have been practiced over the so many number of years 
maybe for like 100 years, 200 years, we have been practicing these conventions, these customers, these uniformly, uniformly accepted rules. And those are providing the basic, right? The rule or the basic idea, basic, uh, the basis for us to prepare the financial statements. Financial statements are pay hadana kuta. We take it a padanam in a mulika de valtikatianoni. If a piaudu gana tis a karakan avi levi 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 lam, even if we take a sum matavilati, when a make in a muladarma tien donikinikat. Right, we need to maintain these principles. These are like basic principles. So those are what we call the accounting concepts. And we are supposed to learn around 14 accounting concepts. There are like 14 accounting concepts, are there? Accounting concepts. Ginum Karana Sankalpas Avaninda Hatra Capita, again, I can't let you. Right, we'll see. Okay. Right. What do you mean by accounting concepts? What do you mean by accounting concepts? Mamekata, what of three months then now? Yeah. What do you mean by accounting concepts? Look here. Right, let me highlight the important points. Accounting concept refers to the basic assumptions. Basic assumptions. Those are the basic assumptions, right? Which serve the basis of recording actual business transactions. In order to maintain uniformity. Consistency. Right? Right. Consistent player. is a consistent consistent. performance Right. In preparing and presenting financial statements, certain rules or principles have been evolved. 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 Add in the accounting concepts, men may have a key way. You can be called at this semi accounting practice correct in Anna Cotter. Right with the usage for you with the practice of accounting for the so many number of years, these concepts have evolved. Abia Rudugan accounting Karla 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 may Sankalpa ticket 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 up Yatre, good and agility. Right. These rules and principles are what we call the accounting concepts. These are the foundations. In preparing and presenting financial statements, account statements without using the accounting concept, you can't prepare. For you to prepare the financial statements, it is a must that you need to you know prepare the financials in accordance with these accounting concepts. Right? These are the foundation. All these concepts have been uh, developed over the years from experience. Thus, they are universally accepted roles. Eva me loke purama accountants la can accounting professionals la piligan. So, world over, the professional accountants accept these accounting concepts. By using these accounting concepts, we prepare the financial statements. Okay, right. Now you know the basics of what is the meaning of the accounting concepts right now we are going to learn what are these accounting concepts we have we'll see accounting concept so one particular accounting concept what we are going to learn is the business entity concept we are going to learn about the business entity concept. I mean, business entity concept then we are going to learn about the concept called accrual concept of accrual concept then we are going to learn about another concept called matching concept matching concept then we are going to learn another concept called historical cost concept historical cost concept then we are going to learn another accounting concept called money measurement concept money measurement concept right we are going to learn another accounting concept called going concern concept going concern concept and we are going to learn another concept called periodicity concept then we are going to learn about the 
realization concept. We are going to learn about the prudence concept, right? Then we are going to learn about the disclosure concept. We are going to learn about the consistency concept, right? So we are going to learn about the consistency concept, right? We are going to learn about the substance over form concept. We are going to learn about the substance over form concept, right? So starting off which, we are going to learn the business entity concept. We are going to learn the accrual concept. We are going to learn about the matching concept. We are going to learn about the historical cost concept. We are going to learn about the money measurement concept. We are going to learn about the going concern concept, right? We are going to learn about the periodicity concept. We are going to learn about the prudence concept. We are going to learn about the realization concept. We are going to learn about the disclosure concept. We are going to learn about the consistency concept. We are going to learn about the substance over form concept. So like that, uh, we have to learn these accounting concepts. We have to learn these accounting concepts, right? We have to learn about these accounting concepts, right? So let me put the remaining accounting concepts as well. Right. So there are like two concepts that we have to learn, two other concepts, which are I have almost covered everything. The only thing missing was the materiality concept. Right. Okay. So these are the accounting concepts that we are going to learn. The business entity concept, the matching, historical cost, money measurement, going concern, periodicity, realization, prudence, disclosure, consistency, substance of form, and the uh, materiality concept. Right. Okay. So we are going to... Uh, learn one by one separately we are going to learn one by one separately starting with the business entity concept right it's a very very easy concept we'll try to learn this concept right we'll try to learn the business entity concept right now business entity concept what it says is when you take the owner of the business right let's say this is the owner of the business and let me take this as the business for an example. This is the business. Now, what we need to understand in the business entity concept is owner and the business are two different, right? These are not equal. These are two different. We have to always treat owner being separated. Owner being separated from the business. Business is a separate independent entity. This is a separate independent entity. Business is a separate independent entity than the owner. Right? Now, this is something most of the people struggle to understand. Now, let me make your life easy. Consider business as a separate person. Business is a Owner is a different person. Business is a different person. So you have to treat the business as a different person. Right? Then, how, how, what is the implication of this one? Right? A business is a separate person. When owner provide money to the business, when owner provide money to the business, 
then how do we treat that when owner provides money to the business right now you need to always consider business as a separate person and he is getting money from a guy called owner now this let's say i am the business this is my owner now owner has given me some money right so then from my point of view the business point of view i have to pay that back so the business is treating this as a internal liability business eka meka treat karanne internal liability eka vidiyata so this we called as equity meka api kena equity kiyala aidikaraya gen labena salli mata kiya ganna business you have to consider the business as a separate person now owner is a different person who has given me money to the business i have received money from a guy called owner so I, I i'm liable to him right i have to repay i have to repay i have to repay i am liable to him so we consider that as an internal commitment internal liability which we call as equity equity ekanelamai financial position ekke api assets ui equity liability wenama daanne me equity kela kenna mokada internal liability ekak generally liabilities kenna ona external liabilities these are the liability side api ekena equity ekak liability patte daanne because owner's money for us it's a commitment we have we have a promise that we have to repay that me given loan have to repay okay All right then what else what else now this owner he has his own expenses he has his own income his personal expenses his other personal income business has business expenses and business has business income now business is a separate person business is a separate person now if i am a separate person i have my different income i have my expenses so in business we have to treat separately right so i am going to provide information about my income and my expenses business income and the business expenses that i have to report now i am not going to incorporate the owner's income owner's expenses in my financial statement as my income or my expense no aitikaryage vidyadamai aitikaryage aadayam business ekka wana mage aadayam mage vidyadam kiyala man daanne yanne ne i am the business i am a separate person owner is a separate guy so his expenses his income is separate my income and my expenses are separate right evam wenama tiyagne meyage wenama tiyagne eya eya wenama tiyagne right if the business were to do an expense of the owner aidikaryage vidama business ek karai kele dannu that we consider as a drawing right aidikaryage vidama if we have done a expense of the owner expense of the owner right we consider it to be a drawing api ekata kiyana ganilla kiyala ekena aitikarya vyapareyage salli gatta wage thama api treat karanne we don't consider owner's expense as a business expense ekena business expense godata daanne yanne ne we don't consider owner's expenses as business expenses if owner's expense has been done by us the business we consider it to be a drawing consider it to be a drawing right api thuma owner ge income ekak business ekata avai kiyala let's say one of the owners interest income is received to the business income personal income of the owner so then we consider as a reduction of a drawing ekena yan drawing aduwi mak wage right it's kind of a reduction of a drawing ne aidikaraya ge drawing aduwi mak widira api consider karana so we don't treat that as owners income expense as part of the business income and the expenses those are two separate otherwise there's no line no uh, we have to treat the business separately independently no then only we can track the performance of the business no 
අපි රයිතිකාරයාගේ ඔක්කොම මේ කස්සෙ ඔබලා එහෙම ගන්න ගියොත් we can measure the performance no so for us to measure the performance of a business we have to treat it separately the income separately the expense separately if owners income expense is done through the business those are drawings they were drawing clear right now that is why when we are preparing the financial statements we put the name of the business api business ekena nama danne ekane hari api aithikara ekena mona wenne danne we put the name of the business when we prepare the financial statements ne gmc jayasekara management center we don't put the name as gmu bi jayasekara the owners name no we are mentioning the name of the business ne john keels group we don't mention the owners the the, the solely capital no we just mention the name of the business entity okay clear right so that is what we call the business entity concept right we'll see business entity concept business entity concept business entity concept we have to treat the business separated from the owner so this is you know look here there's a hot dog shop right the shop is different ta huh? owner is different two separate independent parties the business and the owner are two separate independent parties what are the examples investment made by the owner in the business is considered as a internal liability named equity internal liability named equity owner drawing money and goods uh, of the business for the personal use owner is drawing money and goods for the uh, of the business for personal use owner is drawing money owner is taking goods for his personal use it's not a business expense it's a drawing it's a drawing owner's personal expenses paid through the business it's not a business expense it's a drawing aithikarya business ge salli gatta aithikarya ge viyadan kara eva business expenses ne those are considered as drawings okay right so i have given a detailed explanation in the tiot business entity concept this concept assumes that for accounting purpose the business enterprise and its owners are to separate this business transactions are separated from the personal transactions of the owner the significance this concept helps in ascertaining the profit of the business as only the business expenses and revenue are recorded so that it's only the business part and all the personal transactions are ignored we don't consider this concept restrains me concept ekak nisa walakkanawalu accountants recording owners private personal transactions aithikaryaunge personal leva api record karanne yanne it also facilitates the recording and reporting of business transactions from the business point of view so it facilitates the recording and reporting the transactions from the business point of view okay so those are the importance of the business entity concept i hope you got the idea right then we move towards a beautiful accounting concept called money measurement concept money measurement concept now what we need to understand is guys all the financial statements are prepared in now in sri lankan context let's say it's in rupee terms right rupee is a monetary term monetary term that means anything right anything that can be measured anything that can be measured in monetary terms measured in monetary terms monetary terms monetary terms can be right anything things that can be measured in monetary terms can be accounted again what the right so for you to account something you should have a rupee value in sri lankan context in, in uh, usa context it may be a dollar value right so if you want to account something you should be able to measure that in monetary terms can what a moolye me wadina kamak thiyena deyak vitarai yowata account karanna puluwa so that will give you a common basis right all the financial statements are prepared on a monetary value right so that you can compare right all the sri lankan financial statements prepared in rupee terms you can compare 
right? You can convert them into dollars and you can compare with another uh, a global company. So everything, all the assets, the liabilities, everything, if you can measure them in a monetary term only, you can account. That means in a business, there can be certain things, though those are valuable, such as, let's say, loyalty, right? And let's say the human capital, right? Human capital, and let's say the attitudes, let's say the ethics, let's say the social values. There can be several other items which are very important, very important from a business point of view, but you cannot place a monetary value. You know, you can't measure the loyalty you know, in rupee terms. You can measure the corporate ethics in a rupee term. You can measure the attitudes of the people in rupee term. You cannot measure the love and care in rupee terms. So if you can't measure, then you cannot record them. Right? In accounting, this is something that we can uh, we, we believe in. If you can measure something, you can control it. If you can't measure, it's very difficult to control. It. So in financial statements, one of the purpose is to control things, right? So we record what we can measure in monetary terms, right? In monetary terms. Therefore, right, it will give a common basis, right? Common basis. That is why in financial statements, you put whether it is in rupees, whether it is in rupees thousands whether it is in dollars, you have to mention the currency, okay? Money measurement concept. Transactions expressed in monetary terms. Transactions expressed in monetary terms can be accounted. Transactions expressed in monetary terms can be accounted, right? Following qualitative items cannot be accounted. So the qualitative items such as the customer loyalty, employee loyalty, ethics and attitudes, you can't place a rupee value here. So thus you are not accounting. Right, we'll see. Money measurement concept. This concept assumes that transactions that can be measured in monetary terms can be recorded. The transactions which cannot be expressed in monetary terms cannot be recorded. What is the significance? This concept guides the accountants on what to record and what not to record. Okay, if you can measure, if there's a transaction, if you can measure and you can give a rupee value, then you can account. What to record and what not to record. It helps in recording business transactions uniformly. Uniform ke ke So everything in a rupee value and you can clearly identify, right? It helps. If all the business transactions are expressed in monetary terms, it will be easy to understand the accounts prepared by the business. Easy to understand, right? So everything in rupees, right? Otherwise, one thing in rupee, other thing in a different scale, other thing in a different scale, very difficult to understand, but it's everything in rupees. It facilitates comparison of the business performance of two different periods or the same of the same firm or two different firms for the same period. Now you can compare, right? With a previous year, with a similar company, you can compare. Because all the financial information are in monetary terms. Okay? Right. So that is what we call the money measurement concept. Money measurement concept. Right. Now with that, we move on to the going concern concept. Going concern concept. Right. We move on to the going concern concept. Okay? Right. What is the meaning of going concern? Right. Now you can't take the meaning of the two words here. Right. Going concern kila nikang nameti and theerumagan damaru. Right. Going ke niya nava concern ke ni prasne akni ka yana kama prasne akni bhi. Right. We'll we'll try to understand the meaning. Right. Meaning. Right. Now, once we have started a business, 
once we have started a business, what is our intention? What is our intention? Generally, in almost all the businesses, the intention needs to continue the business. Intention needs to continue the business. Generally, they don't have an idea to liquidate. Liquidate close down. They don't have an idea to close down, liquidate. They don't have an idea to curtail the business materially. Curtail the business materially. They don't have an idea to curtail the business. Curtail ke like yaan apni kang business se kadu karala scope pe kadu karna downsize karla dana. Kena business se kadeng loko da karanne hoy chootiya tar ode na dya kaot karla dana wagi matta matgi ani ka. Right? Now generally we don't have an idea to do like that. No. Once we run a business, we want to continue the business for the next so many number of years. Right? So that is the basic assumption, right? When you start a business, you are not starting a business to close it down. Ne? You are starting a business to continue the operations. If you are continuing the operation for a foreseeable future period, foreseeable future period, foreseeable future period, if you are going to continue the business for a foreseeable future period, right? you are going to continue for the next so many number of years, right? So many number of years you are going to continue. You don't have an idea to close down the business. No, I'm not going to close down the business. I'm not going to curtail the business operations. My business operations are My idea is to continue the business. That is the basic assumption of everyone who runs the business. Right? So, if you are willing to continue the business for a foreseeable future, then we say the business is going concern. Business secretary, we are going to close down. We are open. We are open. Please come in. Business We are going to continue. So then what we call this the going concern. But if a business is planning a liquidation, if a business is you know curtailing their operations on a material basis. Business operation, if they are going to liquidate the business, then we say you don't have going concern. What a going concern? You don't have an intention to continue. There are certain businesses who want to liquidate next year. Then we say you are not going concern. Because you are going to close it down. Right? So we need to look at the businesses, whether they are going to continue. Generally, almost all the businesses are continuing unless they are in a liquidation position. Right? Therefore, in the presence of going concern, guys, right, what we do is all the assets and the liabilities we classify as current and non-current. We classify as current and non-current. Okay. What is the you know, what is the asset classification as current and non-current to do with going concern? Generally, the current means generally, right? It's about the next 12 months. No, there are some other elements of this definition. Let me take only the 12 months. This is more than 12 months. More than 12 months. Now, current means if an asset, if a liability were to settle within the next year, if an asset, if a liability were to get realized within the next year, settled within the next year, we say it's current. Right? If an asset or a liability were to get settled after a year, realized we say it's non-current. Now in current, it's about Tomorrow to 12 months. Heta in the Ruddha Dakwa. Non current take again, 12 at a vada vadi, but there's no other limit. Kavad the unic limit take a night, like will be there till the infinity. Right? 
So you don't have upper limit in non-current because you are going to continue the business. Non-current dhāne ke ma peno ya continue karna ke la business, right? Ya continue the business. Now, because of this going concern, that is why when we take a, a, a non-current asset, abhi kya ne fix asset ta ke la, fix asset ta ka abhi kya ne meka PP item meka property, plant and equipment ta. Let's say a building. For an example, I purchased a building which is worth of 10 million. Right? 10 million. Now you don't charge entire 10 million to the profit or loss today. Well, I mean, building ke mulu 10 million mother profit or loss. Why you purchase the building? Because you are going to use it for the next 10 years. Then this 10 million will be charged over these 10 years. Right, may 10 million out the higher to let the 1 million charge you know PNL as depreciation. As depreciation because you are going to continue the business, so you are not going to charge the entire cost today to the profit or loss. You are going to cascade it to the number of years and you are going to charge it separately. Right, so when a business is having the going concern, business is a continuation negative. The business is having this continuation, this going concern. Then only the investors will invest now. Then only the bankers will lend you money. Bank was hardly then, I was just hardly then. The going concern is that you know what? That other hardly that hit a bit. That new deal hit a bit. That you can't take that risk now. So investors, lenders always check whether the business is continuing, whether the business is having going concern. Okay. Right. Let's see. Going concern concept. It's an assumption. Na? It's an assumption that the business is continuing its operations for a foreseeable future period. The business is continuing its operations for a foreseeable future period. We learn this in the conceptual framework as well. Right. It's an assumption. That is, this is the basic assumption in financial reporting. A basic assumption in financial reporting. Basic assumption in financial reporting. So, our business is continue to continue. Basic assumption. Right? For a foreseeable future period. Right? It is assumed that entity has no idea of liquidating or curtailing materially the scale of its operation. Operations Navatan Himnatam Pramanatma ko kapadu karand adhasak ne. If the entity has the intention to liquidate or curtail major operations, then financial statements would be prepared on a basis other than going concern basis. Company Vahana Adhasak Tianavana going concern with your current non current Kadagada comes at other bad. Then you have to apply another basis, which is what you call the liquidity basis or the breakup basis. Where all the assets are current, all the liabilities are current. Okkum asset liabilities current with the dala hadana, we know base. But generally, we don't apply that basis because we think business is continuing. Okay. Right. We'll look at the application. Yeah. Look at this uh, financial statements of Lanka Hospitals, Lanka Hospitals Corporation, PLC. You can see assets classified as current and non-current. Non-current, current. Non-current, current. This classification is not because of going concern. Assets and liabilities are classified as current and non-current. Depreciation and property plant and equipment as non-current. Depreciation is not because of PP is non-current. Going concern is not this concept states that business firm will continue its operations for a foreseeable future. The simple idea is that the business has no intention to close soon. They want to continue the business. This is the basic assumption of accounting. Going concern concept determines the classification of assets and liabilities as current and non-current. This concept is connected to depreciation and values of assets as well. For an example, a company purchased a machine for rupees 100,000. Useful life is 10 years. Going concern concept assume the business is continuing for a future period. Therefore, 
charging the entire amount in the year of purchase is not appropriate. Out of the cost, a portion will be charged as depreciation and the balance is kept as a non-current machine. Again, non-current is the right? Okay, so this is the whole idea of going concern concept. Right. Let's see the significance. Without going concern assumption, financial statements cannot be prepared. This shows the continuity of the business. Therefore, the decision makers can make more sensible decisions. This concept helps the banks, financial institutions, creditors to assess the ability of the business to continue. Thereby, they can assess the recoverability of loan facilities. This concept helps to classify non-current and non-current assets and non-current liabilities. Now, we have a more detailed note. Right. Then, we are going to learn about the accounting periodic concept. We are going to periodicity. What is the meaning of this periodic concept? Accounting periodicity concept. Right. Now, when we have started our business, Right, we know as per the going concern, business will continue. Now, for an example, let's say uh, today we started the business in 2023. Right, and let's say the business lasted for 10 years, 2033. Right, and as the owner, I invested 1 million. Once the business is closed down in 2033, let's say I got uh, 3 million as my equity. Business is going to settle. Asset selling external settle. So in 2023, when I started the business, I invested 1 million. 10 years later, I got 3 million. So for an example, I invested 1. I got three. So I have an overall return of 2 million over this 10 years. Now, the higher kiver will have a million a decade return. Right? Now, this is my overall performance of the entire business throughout the useful life. Mulu business like a patangata, the in the la business like a rude hiking, you are a good. My total performance is coming to 2 million. Now, to measure the real performance, right? Now, you can't be waiting until the business is closed down. Business is a business performance. I told you, if you want to control a business, you need to measure things. Then you have to get the reports. Then only you can take corrective actions, right? So you have to look at the performance, you have to get the corrective actions, you have to take the strategic decisions. For that, we need information. Now, you can't be waiting until the end of the business life. So this indefinite business life, business life, you separate them into periods. You separate them into periods. Generally, we take years. So 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, like that. Then, rather than waiting until the end of the business life, at the end of each of these period, what you do is you measure the performance for this period. You measure the performance for this period. Right? So rather than waiting until the end of the indefinite business life, you separate them into different periods and then you prepare the financial statements for these periods so that you can measure the performance. You can take decisions. You can ask for a dividend. You can draw some money. You can use this financial information to get some loans and more investments. And you may have to pay taxes on this, right? So you have to, for the regulatory requirement, your Inland Revenue Department is asking the annual financial statements. Therefore, 
in accounting right so you have to separate the life business life into periods generally one year right and then you have to prepare the financial statement for that period basis clear yeah. okay that is how we do so it is one reason to have depreciation right depreciation nattang api gattoth 10 million api me building ne gatta you are going to use it for 10 years 10 years so me 10 million lamai avurud 10 yen givarai but what we do is you are allocating over that 10 years depreciation ah me depreciation depreciation avurud 10 wenna 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 charge karu and you get the separate financial statements for that period so that you can measure, you can analyze, you can take decisions, you can pay dividends, you can pay taxes. That is why in financial statements we put the period. For the year ended, asset, 31st of March, or you put the 31st of December. Generally, we prepare the financials from 1st of April to 31st of March or 1st of Jan to 31st of December, right? We'll see. Accounting periodic concept. Transactions are recorded with the assumption that profits are ascertained for a specific period. Profit taker can be performance taker, measure karana point taker. Transactions are recorded with an assumption that profits are ascertained for a specific period. Period profit take ascertain current financial southern. On that basis, only we prepare the uh, financial statements. Our profits are prepared, right? Uh, we, we record the transactions with the assumption that profits are ascertained for a specific period. What happens is you take the indefinite life. Of a business, indefinite life of a business, and you separate them into periods. First April to 31st of March, then another first April to 31st of March, like that. They are separating them into accounting periods, and then for that period, you calculate the profits, you pay the dividends, you assess the financial position on that day, how many assets, what were the equity, what were the liabilities. And you do the regulatory requirements. tax So that do for that period. Period. Okay. Right. So what you call the accounting periodicity concept. We'll learn. All the transactions are recorded in the books of accounts on the assumption that profits on these transactions are to be ascertained for a specific period. This is known as accounting period concept. This concept requires that a statement of financial position and profit or loss account should be prepared at regular intervals. regular intervals. This is necessary for different purposes like calculation of profits. Profit right? Performance Ascertain the financial position. financial position strong the to calculate the tax like that. Further, this concept assumes that indefinite life of business is divided into parts. These parts are known as accounting periods. It may be one year. It may be six months. Right? Generally, one year taken as one accounting period, which may be calendar year, 1st of Jan to 31st December, or a financial year, 1st of April to 31st of March. As per accounting period concept, all the transactions are recorded in the books of accounts for a specified period of time. Hence, goods purchased and sold during the period, rent, salary, CTC paid for the period are accounted for and against that period. Period data tamay api viedang adayam record karan. Significance it helps to assess the financial performance, profit or loss. Or the business or the financial year, but the based on previous information and the future prospects can be predicted. Now, once we have prepared the financials for a particular year, you can you know cross check with the previous year, you can predict the future. Yeah, the tax expense for the year can be calculated and paid. It also helps the banks, financial institutions to assess the performance of a business 
for a particular period. It also helps the business to pay dividends to the owners at regular intervals. Ne, mam business ekada salli dala. Aurdu apito me business e aurdu panahak do noi kele. Panahem pas se pratila apet ganna kali inda ban. Ata sare sare performance ke bala bala magi share ke mangan do. Dividend ek gan do. Drawing karan do. For that I need accounting information. Okay. Okay, so with that, we are going to move on to the concept called historical cost concept. Historical cost concept, right? Now I have put some uh, historical monument, right? The Rome Colosseum, right? So what is the meaning of this historical cost? It simply says, right, the assets, Right, or any other financial statement element. It can be asset or a liability or a expense or income. Right? So these should be recorded, recorded at their historical cost. At their historical cost. Right? Historical cost. Now uh, we'll take the concept of historical cost. We'll take a machine, right? We'll take a machine. Let's say this is the machine. Right, this is the machine. Now I purchase this machine. I purchase this machine. I purchase this machine at two million. Two million. For me, it cost two million to purchase the machine. For me to deliver the machine, for me to do the transportation, for me to do the installation, and for the direct taxes and all, I had to pay another one million. So the delivery, the installation, and the direct taxes, all together. Now these are also capital costs. Huh? Without delivering the machine here, I can't use it. No, without installing, I can't use it. Without paying the direct taxes, I can't get the machine. So these are also part of my cost. So my initial cost, my initial cost came to 3 million. Right now, on the day I acquired the machine, the purchase cost and other direct expenses, other direct capital expenditures together, the cost of the machine is 3 million. So that is my starting historical cost. Now, this historical cost, I have to charge it to my profit or loss as depreciation. Let's say over a period of six years, right? This 3 million will be divided by six years. That is 0.5. So now let's say one year has gone. So my cost is 3 million. From that, I need to deduct the depreciation 0.5. 2.5. In second year, this is the first year, this is the second year. 3 million, 0.5 into 2 is 1 million. Two. Third year, 3 million minus 1.5, 1.5. Like that, right? We are going to continue. Now, some of you guys think historical cost is only about this 2 million. No. On the date of acquiring the asset, on the date of creating the asset, if there are any direct capital expenditure, that is also part of your cost of the asset. And not only that, subsequently, we have to adjust the depreciation. So we have to adjust the impairment. And there can be subsequent capital expenditure. My machine is not part of the machine. It is 1 million. That is also capital expenditure. Those are part of my cost. That is also historical cost. Right? The amount you have incurred today capitally on this asset. My asset is a minimum. Right? It is a gun, 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 a
then subsequently those are get depreciated amortized impaired and there are some capital expenditure those are also part of historical cost historical cost means the cost we really incurred api attaram apita giyapu iyadama hari da this particular machine at the end of the second year avurudu dekak gata wenakota me machine eka 2 million ne api historical cost eka let's say at the market market eke me machine ganan gihilla market has a value of 5 million right market has a value of 5 million then machine ne ganan gihilla machine hin giyak kevi in the market it has a value of 5 million but in our books it's 2 million historical cost says you are going to keep the items at your historical cost maybe the market value may be different market value ka wenas wenna puluwan api api historical cost ekata thamai asset eka tiyanne right then me me historical cost kiyana concept eka passe challenge wenawa subsequently this historical cost concept got challenged with the fair value concept it was alut concept ekak genawa fair value concept ekata kota eken kiyanne api market value ekata items tiyanne ne kiyala right Two different concepts. Initially, the historical cost is right, but with the time, there was another concept overruled to a certain extent. The historical concept, the fair value. But still, if you take today, we have both concepts. Historical cost is also there, fair value concept is also there. Choice is given to the 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 board the directors directors lot of policy decision ne ganna deela thiyena what is the value you are going to take historical cost of the fair value okay right so this is basically the idea of the historical cost paada giyapu wiyadamata items tika thiyanna kiyana eka thamai historical cost ekey di ben right historical cost concept assets are recorded at their cost assets are recorded at their cost what we need to understand is historical cost is very reliable but giyapu cost ekane sure shot ne market value ko ma adha ena adha tiyeida heta tiyeida harida nadda boruwak da nadda wi nemano right so this are very reliable cost initial cost it may be the cost of purchase direct cost direct taxes man kiwi to see inpula and ega de tarak ne cost ekak athule subsequent adjustments uth thiyena depreciation impairment subsequent capital expenditure ko wenawa hondi cost kiwa me giyapu wahanayak gatta laksha 50 ak giya 50 ha vitaranne me wahane den wa mona hari eke wahane mona hari part ekak install karanne giyapu yedamak thiyena wana eka depreciate wenawa ne mokko adjust wenawata historical cost kiyala thamai kiyanne historical cost concept Historical cost concept states that all assets to be accounted at their cost. This cost may initially include the purchase price, direct costs, and uh, direct taxes, if any. Example, a machine was purchased by XYZ for 500,000. An amount of 1,000 was spent on transportation. In addition, rupees 2,000 were incurred on installation. The cost of the machine will be rupees 503,000. The machine may have a market value of 520,000, but the asset will be accounted at cost. The impact of the historical cost concept is the amount incurred to acquire the asset will be reflected in accounts. Further, with the passage of time, cost will be adjusted to depreciation, impairment, etc. Significance. This concept requires assets to be shown at their acquisition cost initially which can be verified from supporting documents reliable supporting documents verify it helps in calculating depreciation of fixed assets the effect of the historical cost concept is that paid assets shall only be reflected in financials therefore the reliability of the financials are higher incur which cost assets so the financials are more reliable Right. So that basically puts into a part of the accounting concepts discussion.
right so let us move on to the next part huh? Okay, right. So we'll continue on accounting concepts. We have learned a few, right? We have learned a few, right? So we are going to start our discussion on the dual aspect concept. Dual aspect concept. What is the meaning of dual aspect or the duality concept? This is something you already know. Right, dual aspect concept or the duality concept is what does it say? Is when we take every transaction, if you take every transaction, this every transaction has a dual impact. Dual impact. This dual impact will lead to impact the assets, equity. The liabilities that is why we build up the equation saying assets are equal to equity plus liabilities equity consists of another two elements right what is income and expenses so as a result of a transaction these assets income equity expenses liabilities are getting impacted right every transaction every transaction has a dual impact every transaction has a dual impact that dual impact we are going to record as the debit and the credit so we determine that one is assets equal to uh, your equity plus income plus expense minus expenses plus liabilities then we take assets and expenses to one side, equity plus income plus liabilities to the other side. Assets and expense side, we consider it to be the debit side. Equity income and the liabilities side is the credit side. So every transaction will have an impact on impact of debit and a credit. So it can be either one, right? Either side. So one thing goes up, then other thing should come down. Or one thing goes up, the other side should also increase. So equation no? if one side increase, other side should also increase. Again, may path the debit to not may path the credit to. Or if one side increase, the same side should come down. Right? Oh, when one side increase, credit same side should come down, debit. So that every transaction has an impact, which is going to impact either an asset, equity, or liability. We if we expand it. Asset, expense, income, uh, equity, and a liability. So those are going to get either increased or decreased. Right? This dual impact. So that we record as a double entry. So this is a very important concept because uh, this is kind of an error detection. It's, it's linked to an equation. So if there's an impact to one side, other side should also get impacted. So it should be equal. There can't be any difference. So you can detect any error. If you have put only one side, you can always detect that error, right? That is the beauty of a dual impact uh, concept or the duality concept. We'll see the dual aspect concept. Every transaction has a dual impact. Every transaction has a dual impact. Examples, investing money to the business. Business second I told you we have to take separately the business and the owners. Right now, we have to take the point of, of the business. Money goes up, cash goes up, and your commitment towards the owner, which we call the capital, goes up. Capital goes up. Purchase of motor vehicle on credit. Motor vehicle goes up. The loan, the credit, the motor vehicle loan will increase. Sale of items on credit. Debtors will increase. Sales will increase. 
paid the salaries of the employees salaries will increase cash will come down salaries will increase cash will come down purchase of raw materials on cash cash will come down raw material the items will increase or you say the purchases goes up okay but every transaction has a dual impact A duality concept is expressed through the basic accounting equation, assets equal liability plus equity. The implication of dual aspect concept is that every transaction has an equal impact on assets, liabilities, and in such a way that total assets are always equal to total liabilities. Mankan equity can be internal liability. Equation nika start karane, equation nika mulima patangane. Assets equal liabilities kialani. Liabilities tame varga de katakadani equity and external liabilities kiala. Right? Okay, start it. Okay. Right. Dual aspect concept. Dual aspect is the foundation or the basic principle of accounting. It provides the very basis of recording business transactions in the books of accounts. This concept assumes that every transaction has a dual effect. That is, it affects two accounts in their respective opposite sides. Therefore, the transaction should be recorded at two places. It means both aspects of the transactions must be recorded in the books of accounts. Significance. This concept helps accountant in, accountants in detecting the errors. It encourages the accountants to post each entry in opposite side of two affected accounts. Opposite side, click and debit credit. Can you get it? Okay. So we have learned the dual impact or the duality concept. Duality concept. Right. So with that, we are going to learn a concept called realization. Realization concept. The realization concept is directly linked with the income. Income. This is not connected to any other thing. It's basically connected to income. But it simply says, what it simply says is, it's very basic idea, right? The realization concept, not a difficult one, right? What realization concept says is income, right? Income shall be recognized, income shall be recognized when it's realized, when it's realized. Income mega anduna gan na kela kena realize suna. Income is recognized when it is realized. Ek realize suna ata passi. What is the meaning of realized? Realize means when the legal right to receive money, legal right to receive money is established. When we are recognizing the revenue, as and when the item is realized, you can recognize. What is the meaning of realization? When the legal right to receive money is established. Now, for an example, think, right? You are a seller. There's a customer. Uh, who wants to buy a mobile phone from you? Bargain phone neka gande I know. Right? He comes and he wants to buy a mobile phone. And let's say uh, you didn't had the mobile phone with you. Aga phone neka the The value of the phone is fifty thousand. Phone neke vadina kama panasda hai. Customer paid uh, twenty five thousand today. Ada ke woi kele thano ko customer. Right, let's say 7th of March, and I give a customer 25,000. And then you delivered the phone, or phone like deliver kara 8th of March. The customer paid the balance 25,000 on 9th of March. Customer 
balance එක ගෙව්වා ඊට පහු වෙන්න. So 7th of March you didn't have the mobile phone with you. So the customer came and he paid an advance 25000 on the very next day you gave him the phone and you received the balance 25000. When were you legally entitled? When were you legally entitled to receive money? Salli ganna aithi establish une maartu hatad atad namiyadu. As a seller, what was your promise? Seller vidiruage porondu mokad to give a phone. When did you honor that promise? Why promise eka honor kare koi vilayadu? On 8th of March, when you gave the customer that particular phone. A customer te phone nega dunna point nega tiyena wani. You gave a phone to the customer ne, on 8th of March. That was your promise, no? And you delivered your promise on 8th of March. Now, once you have delivered your promise, now you are entitled to receive the money. Seller ke ne ke aage porondu ishta karna point nega tiyena. And ne point nega itama yada salli hamba vina sudhu suve. A point to get my income maker recognized. So the 25,000 you received today is not an income, it's an advance. Tomorrow, when you give him the money, now you can recognize 50,000. You are entitled to recognize the entire 50,000 because you have realized, you have, you have honored the promise. Right? So that is what it says. In the realization concept. Right? Then you can recognize the payment. Similarly, for an example, let's say I have agreed to teach you for three months. And I'm going to charge uh, 30,000. 30,000. I have promised to teach you for three months and I'm charging 30,000 and you have to pay upfront. I'm going to teach you for three months if you pay 30,000 today. Now, for me as the lecturer, when can I recognize the 30,000? I have to see when I'm establishing the legal right to receive the money. What is my promise? I'm going to teach. Teach can you can a tugala for negative the name? It's going to continue for three. So my promise will be honored, my promise will be delivered over a period of three months. Then I can recognize the thirty thousand on the over the period of three months. For an example, let's say every month, 10,000. income recognize Promise deliver So it's a service, no? Service is offered over a period of time. So you have to recognize the revenue over the period of time. That is what we call the realization concept. Realization concept. Right. It says revenue recognized once it's realized. You have to recognize the income of the revenue once it's realized. Meaning of realized means the legal right to receive money is established. As and when the legal right to receive money is established. Mudalla bhaganivati the aithiya tahauru pasu. Once goods and services are delivered on either credit or cash, okay. that's the whole idea. Example of realization concept, revenue shall be recognized once legal right to receive the money is established. Right? It does not occur at the point of receiving the order, but once the goods are delivered. Order a hambuna ekilapita adama generate in ne, order a deliver gram of my adama generate in. Right? Okay. Determining the realization point. We'll take a small example. Raja jewelers received an order 
for a necklace on 1st of January uh, 2021. Let's see. Money was paid on 5th of Jan. The necklace was handed over to the customer on 6th of Jan. So when should we recognize? 6th of Jan. 6th of Jan, right? 6th of Jan. We'll see the next one. Bandara is selling cables. A customer placed an order to buy 500,000 worth of cables on 1st of March. 300,000 worth of cables were delivered to the customer on 31st of March. Balance was delivered on 2nd of April. Financially ends on 31st of March. So how can you recognize the revenue? You can recognize 300,000 on uh, 31st of March. Balance 200,000 on 2nd of Dilumi has providing uh, investment consultancy services. Business accepted a consultancy project of six months on 1st Jan 2025 or something at a value of 600,000. Financially ends on 31st of March. Mass uh, higher project take up. Right, Masa Tunai never thought out of the 600,000 divided by six months into three months. So you can recognize 300,000 for the period of 1st of Jan to 31st of March. January Palavinda Sita Martu Tisekataka Masa Tunata Lakshatunaka Daima Kandunagan Pulu. You can't recognize the balance. Take any lang out. Heruka is running a carpentry business. A customer has placed an order to make a chair on 1st of February. Advance paid on the same day. Chair was ready by 15th of February. Balance was paid by the customer on 15th of February. Customer collected the chair on 16th of February. So you have to recognize the revenue on 16th of February. Right. We'll see the realization. This concept states that revenue from any business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized. The term realization means creation of a legal right to receive money. Selling good, goods is realization, receiving order is not. In other words, it can be said that revenue is said to have been realized when cash has been received or right to receive cash on the sale of goods or services or both has been created. In a legal right, in simple words, that is where when you honor the promises, when you honor the promises, seller with the promise This concept states that revenue shall be recognized once goods and services are actually delivered to the customer. That is where the legal right to receive cash is established. This concept helps to recognize the revenue at the correct point. It avoids recognizing revenue prior to realization, before realization. Can I attempt a customer to recognize revenue? Can I attempt a customer to recognize revenue? Advance to recognize revenue? You have to deliver the promise. Okay. Right. So with that, we move on to another accounting concept, which is what we call the accrual concept. It is what we call the accrual concept. What does it say in the accrual concept? In accrual concept, what it says is, when it comes to transactions, you have to recognize once the transaction is incurred, once the transaction is incurred, recognize not at received or payment of money. So when you are recognizing a transaction, don't wait until you receive money or pay money. If the transaction is done, if you have completed the transaction, if the transaction has incurred, the things have happened already, then account it. Don't wait until the receipt of cash. For example, a business sold 100,000 
worth of items to a customer on first of check on a credit basis. The customer is going to settle, customer is going to settle this on 1st of February, 1st of February, right? So you are not going to, now here you have made a sale, no? sale has already incurred, sale will ever right? So we have to recognize the sale today. So since it's a credit transaction, you are going to recognize this sale as sales credit Debtors, debtor ke lagi nikke na. Debtor, apa debit ke? Then when you receive money one month later, cash debit and debtor credit. So you're going to remove the debtor once you receive the cash. So we create a temporary person called a debtor in our books, right? Because in accrual concept, as and when the transaction has been incurred you have to recognize don't wait until the receipt of the payment because of this accrual concept we create debtors in our books we create creditors in our books we create prepayments in our books we create accrued liabilities in our books the debtor, the creditor, the prepayment, the accrued liabilities, right? The, all these are created. All these are created because of the accrual concept. You don't wait until the receipt or the payment of the cash, right? What you do is you record as and when it is incurred. Incurred. Accrual concept. Transactions recognized once incurred. Not at cash receipt or the payment. Not at cash receipt or the payment. Accrual concept results in recognizing debtors, creditors, even inventory to a certain extent, accrued expenses and prepayments. Accrued expenses and prepayments. Accrued expenses and prepayments. As per accrual concept, the effect of transaction shall be recognized at the point the transaction has incurred and not at the point of cash receipt or the payment. Right? Revenue is recognized when sale is made. Thus, the debtors are recognized. Purchase is recognized once supply is done. Thus, creditors are recognized. Expenses and income recognized when incurred. This is resulting in accrued and prepaid income and expenses. Significance, accrual concept helps to recognize the income and expenses as and when it incurs. This will help to properly recognize the transactions. This helps in calculating the net profit of the business. The financial statements except the cash flow statements are prepared using accrual concept. So we use the accrual concept to prepare the financial statements, except the cash flow statement. Okay. Right. So with that, we are going to move on to a, another beautiful accounting concept called matching concept. Now you can see everything is matched, right? Your bottle, your shoes, and your whatever the equipments, those are matched in the same color. Similarly, what is this matching? Matching concept says is when you are calculating the profit, the revenue shall be matched with the relevant expenses. When you are calculating the profit, right? When you are calculating the real profit from the revenue, the relevant expenses, you have to deduct. From the revenue, you have to deduct the relevant expenses to arrive at profit. So you have to match the expenses first, the revenue. Income is generated through the realization concept. 
ఆదాయం ని రియలైజేషన్ ఎక్కింది ఎక్కడ దాల వ్యదంటి కిందిమో కింద మ్యాచింగ్ ఎక్కి మ్యాచింగ్ ఎక్కి గివ్ మీ సమ్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ యు నో ఫర్ ఎన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ పర్చేస్డ్ ద ఫోటో కాపీ మెషిన్ ఐ పర్చేస్డ్ ద ఫోటో కాపీ మెషిన్ అండ్ ఇట్ కాస్ట్ మీ 500000 ఐ యామ్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ ఇట్ ఫర్ 4 ఇయర్స్ ఐ యామ్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ ఇట్ ఫర్ 4 ఇయర్స్ ఎవ్రీ ఇయర్ ఇట్ విల్ జనరేట్ మీ ఎన్ ఇన్కమ్ ఆఫ్ 200000 హేమ అవృద్ధేమ మట లక్ష దేకక ఆదాయమక్ మీ ఆగి నేను ఫోటో కాపీ మెషిన్ ఎక్కి నేను then this 500000 we have to allocate each year ne etakota ne eka match wenne meka mata similar income wenona i am going to apply 125000 or 25000 125000 and 125000 as what depreciation if i am getting the same income here i am going to allocate the expense right i'm going to allocate the expense from that income so i'm going to match that expense versus the income matching concept matching concept right ekata dala aadayamata dalo viyadamata rahiva meka galapandu right and let's say for an example we have made a profit of rupees 2 million api million dekaka profit tag genawa from this profit we are going to pay a bonus ab meke bonus ek givena 50000 then this 50000 i have to deduct from the same profit profit again ab bonus ek givena you have to match you have to match right you have to match we'll see the matching concept match the relevant expenses to relevant income relevant expenses to the relevant income application depreciation of pp right property plant and equipment over the useful life recognizing the bonus expenses against the relevant profit recognizing the warranty provisions against the sales income idanna mama ada rupiyal 100 ka sale ekak karana mama hitana me ekem 20 ak mata warranty claim ekak e kiyala ehena me sale ekin adu karana warranty claim ekak wage warranty provision ekak we are expecting there there can be a warranty provision from the custom of 20 rupees then you have to deduct it from the same revenue ee aadayam ena thani kin aadayamin adu karanna kiyana ne me kiyanne pnl ekke uda aadayama 100 gattot yata viyadamakin 20 adu karanna so you will arrive at the real profit right you will arrive at the real profit so you have to match the expense to the relevant income will learn. the matching concept states that the expenses incurred to earn the income must belong to the same accounting period therefore once income is realized it will be recognized one can realization again the income again then the relevant expenses incurred in generating that income will be recognized against the income using accrual concept ara vedantika accrual concept ekata api account karala ara aadayam ta rewa galapana matching concept will help to calculate the accurate profit see the significance it guides on how the expenses should be matched with revenue for determining exact profit or loss for a particular period it is helpful for the stakeholders to know the relevant profit or loss relevant profit or loss then depreciation ki uwa me ekata adala wena concepts godak tibunata main ma concept ekak matching the main concept is matching concept you have to match uh, the cost of the pp against the income you are going to generate right so that we are going to move on to uh, prudence concept prudence concept the prudence right prudence concept means it's very very uh, easy to understand the prudence concept something like this right you know when we calculate the profit it consists of one side income other side expenses when you calculate our financial position one side we got assets other side we got liabilities the difference is equity you know and we know that we know that if the assets are increased profits will go up if the expense is reduced profits will go up if the assets are increase financial position will increase 
if the liabilities are decreased financial position is increased so what we can understand here is right by uh, overstating income overstating income right and by understating and by understating expenses we can manipulate profits by overstating assets by understating liabilities we can manipulate financial position right by overstating income adaya vedi pura da by understating expense we can adu enda we can increase the profit we can manipulate the profit apita boru profit tap enna by overstating assets patkam vedi pura da by understating liabilities pagake madu enda we can manipulate atishyokti app enna puluwa your financial position what prudence concept says is prudence kiyanawa don't overstate income don't understate expenses don't overstate assets don't understate liabilities me wedding income pennan depa harida me aduwing wiyadam pennan depa me wedding wakkam pennan depa adwing liabilities pennan depa don't show you know overstated income overstated assets don't show understated expenses or understated liabilities just show the real profit don't manipulate the profit just show the real financial position don't manipulate oka thamai prudence ekin kiyan ne prudence what prudence says is don't show manipulated picture you have to be very passive ah hari man ekan safe side play karanda safe side play karanda api aadayam vatkam panala wedi pura daanda yanne but in expense liabilities we are very cautious api hari ma bayai passive ne api play karanne api hari ma conventional yeah we are very very risk averse api hari ma risk averse aadayam vatkam panala ganne i think viyadam liabilities tibunoth ehema etana yam kisi dat thiyena na we account for it right so we we being very very cautious very very risk averse very very passive so that aspect is what we call the prudence concept that is why we make lot of provisions no ekane oy prudence concept ekane nisa thamai api me godak provisions karanne right we make this impairment provision we make this uh, doubtful debt provision we make the warranty provision we make the gratuity provision right so we make lot of provisions api me can we are hacky we are done you know api eva account karna we are hacky alaba you know eva api account karna there are it's a possible loss or possible expense we account for it because we don't want to understate the expense or the liabilities and at the same time we avoid taking uh, you know income or the assets if those are not really we are entitled for okay that is what we call the prudence concept prudence assets and income are not overstated expense and liabilities are not understated aadayam vatkam wedi pura daanda epa viyadam wagakim aduwen daanda epa if the income is not overstated expense is not understated we are getting conservative profit non manipulative profit conservative passive profit tak you know if the assets are not overstated liabilities are not understated we get a conservative financial position non manipulative financial position let's see the explication doubtful debt provision thoda me ta debtor gena sakeyak kawa gama in doubtful debt what will happen is you don't know whether debtor is bankrupt debtor bankrupt ela ne but the indications are not good yani kan bankrupt binda wage yan then we make a provision api anagathe enna thiyena wedawa damma gan doubtful debt provision recognizing the impairment losses again vatkameta haaniyak vela thiyenawa na vatkame vatnakam adu vela thiyenawa na 
we reduce the asset value. Api thomu car ekak accident tuna value we kadu eno ani we recognize that value reduction as a provision impairment provision. Recognizing provision against obsolete inventory. Inventory at the end of product then expire when they are never move in there. Can you have it up and I got there doing we couldn't allow making this amount of hard work and you make the provision today. Right. We have to allow all the provision to copy them. Gun can make a big other than asset ticket, you know, but now come out to kill a pain. Now, then we have to make a provision. Prudence. Concept. Prudence concept says not to overestimate the amount of income. And assets, and not to underestimate the amount of expenses and the liabilities. As a result, the profit will not be manipulated. The financials will be prepared using a conservative approach. Prudence requires the expenses and liabilities to be recognized uh, then and there at the relevant values. Income and assets to be recognized once it's realized or acquired. This principle is also called conservatism principle. Make it a conservatism. Okay. So with that, we move on to another accounting concept. Right? This accounting concept is what we call the substance over form. Substance over form concept. We'll see what is the meaning of the substance over form. Right? Substance over form. Right. It is something like this now substance over form. We'll put substance over form. I can put this as substance over form. Form means the legal form. Substance means the reality. Reality in the sense this is the economic reality. So in simply it means your economic reality is more important than the legal form or the legal reality. When it comes to accounting guys, we don't care about the legal reality. As long as economic reality makes a sense, we tend to account that. Uh, for an example, let's say there are some motor vehicle, right? So you got this motor vehicle. This is the business. Let's say this is a business. Business got this motor vehicle through a lease. So we have the LB leasing. If you take the vehicle's true owner, owner of the vehicle is LB. Because we took that vehicle under a lease facility, you know, we know that throughout the lease period, the owner will be the leso. Owner will be leso, right? Leso, leso means the leasing company here. So LB is the owner. But if you look at from the business point of view, even though LB is the owner of the business, vehicle is being used by the business. The decisions with regard to the vehicle is being taken by the business, right? So business is getting all the benefits. Business is controlling. And business is taking the decisions. These are connected, right? When you are enjoying the benefits of that asset, when you are taking the decisions, in other words, you are controlling then we say, even though business is not the legal owner of the vehicle, you can recognize the asset. We, we don't recognize that as a PP. We say it's a right to use asset, right of use asset, ROU. And you, have, you can recognize the asset, right? Though we are not the legal owner, but we are the ones who enjoy the benefits and taking the decisions. So typically we are controlling the asset. So in our books, we can show that asset. We can show that asset. Because in accounting, what we value the most is the economic reality, not the legal reality. That is what we call the substance over form. Right? Substance over form. In accounting, record the transactions to reflect the economic reality than the legal reality. 
record the transactions to reflect economic reality than the legal reality. What are the examples? Recognizing a leased asset, factoring of debtors. Now, in factoring of debtors, what we do is we sell our data. So, no longer the debtors are with us. But sometimes uh, we take the risk of the bad debt. So, even though legally debtors belong to the factoring company, sometimes we keep the debtors in our account because economically uh, we are taking the risk. Right? So, factoring of debtors is an example. Inventory sold on sale or return basis. Sometimes you have sold the inventory on a sale or return basis. Inventories are not with you, but until the inventories are sold or until the return period is elapsed, still those are your inventory. Right. So you have to recognize. So in the substance, in reality, economically, these are our assets. Right. We'll see. Substance or form requires to record the economic substance of transactions than their legal form to present true and fair view of the affairs of the entity. Substance or form concept requires the financial statements to prepare, prepare us to apply the judgment which will better reflect the economic reality in financials, whereas the legal aspect may be disregarded in certain situations. This principle prevents off-balance sheet financing because it's commercial realities that the company has a financial commitment. That commitment should be included in the financial position. Again, the lease asset tax got to think. Are the appear record We are using the asset. We are getting the benefit, but it's not in our balance sheet. Abhi financial position ne kine. Abhi gathi no vahana padha please sekat kat. Abhi hamata na mian ne vahana bani. We do all our tasks with that vehicle, but those vehicles are not in our books. Then it's against the economic reality. So it should be reflected. It should be reflected. So off balance sheet again. Balance sheet again. Pita tiyan assets. It over adu ano. Balance sheet ke thulada thamai okko mati kine. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So there are like a few other accounting concepts. Right. Let me explain them very briefly. One thing is uh, materiality. This actually I explained in the conceptual framework. Materiality, what it says is, right, if a transaction is either omitted or misstated, if it can influence a decision, influence a decision, then we say it is material. If a transaction is been omitted or if the transaction is misstated and it can influence, if it can change the decision, we say it's material. So in accounting, we have to always look at what are the key information? What are these material information that can influence the decision makers? Those needs to be provided. Right? Always remember, materiality depends on both size as well as the nature. So financial statements are provided in such a manner, all the material, all the significant items are being presented to the stakeholders so that they can take key decisions, right? So if something is omitted and misstated and if that decision is changing, then it's a material thing. No, we have to, we have to show them, we have to present them, we have to disclose them in the financial statements, which is coming from the materiality concept. If there are things which are not material, we put them to other income, you know, other expenses, other liabilities, other assets. If it is material, we put them to a separate line item. Tax is material. Tax is a very important decision. 
receivable inventory, property plant and equipment summit. Right? Then we have another accounting concept called consistency. Consistency. That means all our accounting practices, all our accounting practices, our accounting policies, our accounting structures and presentations. Now, what we have to do is we have to consistently apply, consistently apply. Don't change here and there, right? So our accounting judgments, our policies, our practices, right? Accounting policies and practices don't change always. Then it will be very difficult to compare and take decisions, no? Because we take decisions based on our comparisons, no? So for us to compare and take a decision, right? So we need to make sure those are consistent. You can do like that. So it should be consistent. Your application should be consistent. Right? So that is one of the accounting concepts. Another, oh, I would say the last accounting concept is on the disclosure. Disclosure means if it is the main or the important information needs to be disclosed. Right? So we have a separate, in our financial statement, we have separate uh, part of our financial statement called the disclosures. So we have to disclose the important information, which are very material for them to take decisions. So we have to provide proper disclosures in our financial statement. That is a must. It will be note scale again. Right? So those needs to be provided. Right. We'll see a summary on accounting concepts. Let me put the accounting concepts into a summarized manner, right? Entity concept, very easy. Entity concept says business and the owners are two separate, two independent entities, right? So the transactions of the business, separate. Transactions of the owners, separate. Amount invested by the owner, it's an internal liability called capital. Owner's expenses, owner taking money, drawings, not a part of the business expense. Right. Then periodicity concept. So we have to prepare our finances. We have to ascertain the profit for a specific period. Indefinite life of the business separated into periods to measure the performance, calculate the profit, pay the dividends, pay the taxes or the regulatory requirements. Business life separated. A realization concept. We can recognize an income when it is realized, when we have the legal right to receive the money. That means when we have delivered our promise. Recognize the revenue when the right to receive is established. Accrual concept. Recognize the transaction as and when it is incurred. Don't wait until you receive or pay the money. That is where debtor, creditor, accrued and prepayments are created. Money measurement, right? So we are accounting things that we can measure in monetary terms. Transactions that can be measured in monetary terms are only recorded. So we don't care, we don't record the love, care, loyalty, attitudes, ethics, because we can't measure. Dual impact. Every transaction has a dual impact, right? Every transaction has a dual impact. So one impact, the complete opposite, but the same value in another side. So we record them into our assets, liabilities, income, expense, and equity in terms of a debit and a credit. Matching. When you calculate the profit, we need to match the relevant expense to the relevant income. That is why we do the depreciation, the bonus, and the warranty, and this and that. Prudence, what the prudence says is assess income, don't overstate, liabilities expense, don't understate, so we can create a passive or the conservative profit and conservative financial position because we don't want to manipulate anything. That is why we make provisions. That is why we make provisions, right? Matching concept, the depreciation is there and we make provisions, right? We make impairment provision, doubtful debt provision, inventory provisions because of the prudence. 
substance of a form in accounting what matters to us the most is the economic reality than the legal reality that is why we recognize the lease assets in our books right we recognize some of the factoring factor debtors right and inventory which we have sold on sale or return basis historical cost concepts assets we tend to record at the cost we really incurred so that include your initial cost where are the purchase cost direct taxes and other direct expenses and we do the adjustments for the subsequent periods right so we do make adjustments such as maybe the depreciation impairment and maybe the subsequent capital expenditure going concern in accounting we have a basic assumption that we are going to continue the business for a foreseeable future period we don't intend to liquidate or curtail our operations materially that is why we separate the asset liabilities as current and non current materiality an omission or a misstatement if you can influence a decision it's material so we have to always show the material information to the financial statement providers consistency so all our accounting policies our accounting practices we have to apply them consistently right we have to do a consistent application and finally we'll take last one the disclosure right if i mean information which is you know capable of making a difference information these are important shall be disclosed to stakeholders the important information we have to disclose to the stakeholders because that is an expectation right okay so this basically gives you the whole idea on accounting concepts accounting concepts right so you have covered 100% the theories on accounting concepts i hope by uh, watching this video you will be able to learn accounting concepts in a comprehensive manner and finally i gave a summary as well right okay thank you we'll meet up on another day